Welcome back. We are now at uh, Acts chapter 13 verse 42. If you look at the screen, we are now in the last section, Antioch in Pisidia. And Paul has just preached his first recorded sermon. And now we will be looking at the blessings and conflict at Antioch. Antioch here in Pisidia. So verse 42. So when the Jews went out of uh, the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. They are just hearing the glad tidings and they were so glad for the tidings. It is just wonderful news that God, God come has come for us. I mean, in the past, we were so evil. We were after the Jews. We, we killed the Jews. But now God is granting us that gift of salvation, of forgiveness. And so when the Jews went out of the synagogue, I mean, just like some of us, right? The moment the church ends, Zoom, we are, some are even faster. They, they, they leave before the uh, the last song so when the Jews went out of the synagogue the Gentiles beg because they can't have enough that they, they beg that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath we want to hear again now when the congregation had broken up many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God now when the congregation had broken up that means you know service is over many of the Jews and devout proselytes proselytes are Gentiles who have converted to Judaism devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas again you notice the change in leadership who speaking to them persuaded them these Jews and proselytes uh, to continue in the grace of God not in the law of God but in the grace of God on the next Sabbath which is a week later on the next Sabbath almost the whole city came together and you can conclude that mostly Gentiles are there, you know, the, the whole city comprises mostly Gentiles. So, most uh, many Gentiles came together the next Sabbath to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming, they opposed the things spoken by Paul. And I can understand why they were envious. I mean, they are so they have been so possessive. Hey, this is my God. This is our Lord. This is our scriptures. You know, we, we are Jews. And how is it that you are foreigners? You you are Gentiles, you you, you are non-Jews. How come? How come you are so I mean, you, you, you are so thirsty and hungry and, and so, so desirous of these things of the Jews. And for them, they are still struggling to come to terms with what Paul had spoken. They were still struggling to come to terms with what the prophets had written. And though they have been uh, uh, reading this and studying this and reciting this, they, they still cannot understand the purpose of God. So as I mentioned earlier, their heads were full, but their hearts are empty. So it has, it's still taking them a, a, a bit of effort to, to come to terms with all this. And yet these people, these foreigners who are not under the law, how is it they get so excited and they want to hear more? And now they want our God. They want our uh, uh, the word from our God. And they want the Messiah. So, Let's read again. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting. Now, that means when you contradict, you are not contradicting what Paul said. 
you are contradicting the word of God. You are going against the word of God and they blaspheme. And that is definitely something that upsets the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and upsets God. And that is a dangerous point to be. You can go past the point of no return. And, and blaspheming, they oppose the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew uh, uh, frightened. They grew, no, no, they grew bold. They were bold in, 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 the, in the name of Jesus and they pressed on. Uh, and Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you rejected and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, eternal life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. He said it was God's plan. And even when Jesus was on the earth, he said first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles because they were his chosen people, God's chosen people. You said why? But that is God's sovereign choice. He chose the Jews first. And so it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you, the Jews, first. But since you reject it, you don't want it. You discard it. And judge yourselves. And so doing, in so doing, you have removed yourself from this everlasting life. You judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Behold, we, Paul and Barnabas, we, uh, followers of Jesus Christ, apostles of Jesus Christ, we turn to the Gentiles. For the Lord has commanded us, for so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. I have set you, who are you? These are the Jews. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles. In God's original plan, He's, he chose the Jews so that they can be alike to the world, so that they can tell the world how good God has been to them, that through them shining the light, they will draw people to Jehovah, to the God who has created them and provided for them and blessed them. But instead, the Jews turn inward. Instead of look, reaching outward, they turn inward. And they excluded the rest of the world who are not Jews. So they became so inward looking, so exclusive that they became a ritual, they became a religious system. The do's and the don'ts added on by the rabbis in, in the traditions uh, over the years and in volumes and volumes that were written. And it was so limiting that God has decided to use the Gentiles and to, 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 to uh, direct his gospel to the Gentiles, to the rest of the world. But you read this again. What was God's purpose? I have set you as a light to the Gentiles. So Jews, you are supposed to be the light to the Gentiles. And what must you do? That you should be for the salvation to the ends of the earth. You should go and reach out for the salvation of the people of the world in to all, at the, all the ends of the world, of the earth. And why did Paul uh, quote this? Why? Because he and Barnabas are in obedience to this. The, the, the instruction, the command, the assignment has not changed. So Paul and Barnabas, they said, we are in obedience. The command has not changed. The instruction has not changed. The assignment is still there. So Paul and Barnabas, will go on for the salvation to the ends of the earth. So even as he was telling, even as you reject this, it's okay, but we will carry on and we will bring this to the Gentiles. That's what Paul was saying. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be, but you are not, but it's okay. Paul and Barnabas and I, we are going on with this, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Verse 40, 
8. Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of God. They really were praising God and rejoicing in His presence. I mean, it is, you were deprived, you were excluded, but now you heard the good news. You are included, you got hope. And what do you do? Pout, sound, no. You rejoice and that's what they did. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad because now they have eternal life when they believe, when they accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. They were glad and glorified the word of God and as many as, as had been appointed to eternal life believe. Now, this is a very short sentence, but in here, in here you see uh, both God's sovereignty and man's responsibility. Let's read the last part again. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life. This appointment to eternal life is God's sovereignty. God has appointed all of us, the whole world, to be saved. For God so loved the world. Now, the invitation has been sent out. Now, you must accept the invitation and turn up at the wedding, right? You, you, you have all these uh, invites out. You, you, you have all these offers out. You have all these gifts you know, of, of grace, release, extended. And what you must do? You must just accept. You must just believe. So, the sovereign will of God is, the, 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 the God's sovereignty is, all have been appointed. So, as many as had been appointed to eternal life. Okay, believe. So believe that word is the human responsibility. So if you believe, you shall be safe. If you believe, you shall have eternal life. Because all have been appointed, but you must believe. You must do your part. So some said, oh, the, ele the doctrine of election is some have been chosen for salvation and some are condemned already not true all have been chosen all have been appointed but you must accept you must accept the invitation you must believe in Jesus Christ and you will have eternal life so verse 49 and the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region so, so if you remember the map, if you remember the map, throughout all the region. So where were they? They were here, in this area. So throughout this region, they, uh, the word of God spread. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women. So all these are the rich people and the religious people. But the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city. So all those uh, religious leaders raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them and expelled them. That means what? Forced them to leave from their region. Forced them to leave from their region that means you are not welcome here. Please go. Verse 51. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium. But Paul and Barnabas shook off the dust from their feet against them. You remember this? Jesus told his disciples when he sent out the twelve, and wherever you go, Gentile land, and if you are not welcome, shake the dust of your feet because you want to break fellowship with the Gentiles you are not welcome them so you are not welcome there so you shake the dust off your feet don't carry the Gentile dust into your land into your home so shake the dust off so by so doing in verse 51 but they shook the dust from their, their feet against them against who? against these religious Jews these religious uh, 
uh, uh, devout and prominent women and chiefs, chief men of the city. So these unbelieving Jews, they were as good as unbelieving Gentiles. So have nothing to do with them. Uh, even as you leave their place, it is as if you are leaving Gentile land. You treat them like Gentiles. So they shook their, the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium. Where is Iconium? Iconium is about 90 miles to the south uh, east of uh, Antioch. So this is Iconium. If you look in the map, follow the pointer. So, and it came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit and wished, where were these disciples from? These disciples were disciples in Antioch. So even as Paul and Barnabas had gone to Iconium, the disciples, there were disciples remaining here and the disciples remaining there. Hallelujah! They were praising all these Gentile believers. They were praising, they were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! And next week, when we come back, we will continue with the first mission trip and we will see what happened in Iconium and thereafter. So Father, thank you once again for your word. Thank you Lord for your divine plan to include even the Gentiles in reconciliation with you. I thank you Lord for chapter 13. It is indeed a pivotal chapter. If Paul and Barnabas had not accepted this assignment, had not obeyed and gone into the Gentile territory, there would be no gospel to the Gentiles. And it would not have gone to Asia, it would not have gone to Europe, it would not have gone to around the world, and we will not be safe. Thank you, Lord, for using them. And I pray that even as we study this, that we too will be like Paul and Barnabas, that we will go forth to be your ambassadors, that we will go forth and be light to the world for the salvation, for their salvation to the ends of the earth. So help us and use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen.